Welcome to Science Access. In today's class, we'll be talking about cell division, where we discuss mitosis and meiosis, and we'll be following this course outline. Introduction to Cell Division Mitosis. We'll discuss the stages of mitosis, as well as the significance. And we'll also talk about meiosis and the stages of meiosis. We'll now discuss the differences between mitosis and meiosis, and we'll also talk about the significance of meiosis. In the part one of this cell cycle series, we talked about the interface stage, where we talked about the G1 phase, where growth occurred, the X phase, where DNA replication occurred, and the G2 phase, where more growth, uh, DNA check, and all that actually happens. Now, in this video, we'll be talking about the cell division stage, which you can see colored yellow on your screen. Now, the cell division is actually of two kinds, the mitosis and the meiosis. Mitosis is the normal cell division that occurs in our somatic or body cells, which is responsible for growth and worn-out tissue repair. While meiosis is the kind of cell division that is responsible for garment production. What do you understand by the term cell division? Cell division actually occurs when a parent cell divides into two or more cells called the daughter cells. As you can see from the diagram, cell division is part of the cell cycle. We have two types of cell division, the mitosis and the meiosis. Let's start with the mitosis. Mitosis is a kind of cell division in which one cell divides into two daughter cells. Both the parent and the daughter cells are genetically alike, and both the parent and the daughter cell are also diploid. Take a look at the diagram you can see on the scene. You can see that the parent cell is actually diploid, meaning that the chromosome occur in pair. Now, take a look at the daughter cells. They are also diploid. Both daughter cells have the chromosome occurring in pair. As I mentioned earlier, mitosis is the reason why this plant is increasing in size as the cells are continually increasing in number and even the cells are growing. Mitosis is also the reason why this small chick is increasing in size to the matured hen as the cells in the body are actually increasing in size and growing as well through the process of mitosis. Remember, mitosis occurs in normal body cells, not reproductive cells. What are the stages of mitosis? As you can see from the diagram, the stages are prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Now, note that at the end of mitosis, a process called cytokinesis which is the splitting of the cytoplasm occur, as you can see from the diagram. And after then, the cell goes back into the interface stage and the cycle repeats itself. Let's now discuss the phases one after the other. The following events occur in the prophase stage. Chromosome condensation, disintegration of the nuclear envelope, nucleus disintegration or disappearance, and the formation of the mitotic spindle. Now, let's explain this one after the other. Take a look at the nucleus during the interface stage. The chromosomes present are virtually invisible, even with the aid of a microscope. But look at the chromosome at the early phase of the prophase. They start getting thickened and shortened. Now look at it at the late prophase stage. They are very thick and short. The process of this chromosome getting thickened and shortened is termed chromosome condensation. At the interface stage, you can see the nucleus having a nuclear membrane. Now, at the early prophase, the nuclear membrane starts disintegrating, while in the late prophase, you can see the nuclear membrane is virtually absent. Note that the nucleus is present as a dark body in the interface as well as in the early stage of the prophase. Now, take a look at the late stage of the prophase. The nucleus has disappeared. It is virtually absent. Why the last thing that occurs in the prophase stage is the spindle fiber formation. Now, in animal cell, the centromere form the spindle fiber by moving apart and forming the spindle. You can see them in the diagram. Why in the plant cell, the cytoskeleton of the plant actually forms the spindle fiber. Note that the spindle fiber is not attached to the chromosome at the prophase stage. The spindle fiber attached to the chromosome at the metaphase stage. The chromosomes are aligned at the equator or at the center of the hemisphere and there is formation of the metaphase split. Note that the metaphase split is an imaginary line dividing the cell into two hemispheres. Let's talk about the anaphase. The sister chromatids separate to form separate chromosomes and move towards the opposite end. 
Anaphase is actually the shortest phase of mitosis, while prophase is actually the longest phase. Let's talk about the telophase. The telophase is like the opposite of the prophase. The nuclear membrane that disappeared during the prophase stage actually reappeared. Now, the nucleus that disappeared during the prophase stage also reappeared. Now, there is the condensation or the chromosome become thin and long during this stage. The mitotic spindle fiber also disappeared during this stage. And there is initiation of cytokinesis by the formation of cleavage flow, as you can see from the diagram. Now, what is the importance of mitosis? Mitosis is essential for growth, for its repairs of worn out tissues and others. Let's talk about meiosis. Meiosis is a kind of cell division in which a single cell divides twice to produce four cells containing half the original amount of genetic material in the parent cell. Take note that the daughter cells are said to be haploid because they contain half of the genetic material while the parent cell is said to be diploid. Let's take a look at this diagram, which summarizes the meiotic process. Now, the parent cell, as you can see from the diagram, undergo the first division called meiosis 1. This reduces the diploid chromosome in the parent to haploid. As you can see from the diagram, chromosome here, they are occurring in pair, but in this place, they are occurring singly. So we have four chromosomes in the parent cell and two chromosomes in the two daughter cells. Now, this daughter cell also undergo meiosis 2 to form four daughter cells, as you can see from the diagram. This kind of cell division is essential in male and female, and even in flowering plants and other organisms undergoing sexual reproduction where they produce gametes. Let's discuss meiosis in details. Meiosis is divided into two, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Meiosis 1 is regarded as reductional division because diploid chromosome is reduced to haploid, as you can see from the diagram, while meiosis 2 is regarded as equational division. Let's discuss meiosis 1. Meiosis 1 is divided into the following stages, prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, and telophase 1. Let's talk about the prophase 1. Now, the prophase 1 of meiosis is similar to the prophase 1 of mitotic division, such that the nuclear membrane disappears, the chromosome condense, there is disappearance of the nucleus, so it is similar. Now, let's just discuss the differences. In the prophase 1 of meiosis, there are five stages involved. The leptotin stage, the zygotin stage, the parchentin stage, the diplotin, and the diakinesis. In the leptotin and zygotin, the homologous chromosome come together to form a pair regarded as the tetrad. Remember, homologous chromosome means two chromosomes containing exact copies of the same gene. Remember that each character in the human body occur in pair. That's the reason why you have 23 pair of chromosomes. Remember, you have 46 number of chromosomes, but they occur in pair, so we have 23 pair. Now, take note that there is crossing over between homologous chromosome in the parchetin stage. That is the major difference. Now, note this. Remember, in the interface stage, the chromosome duplicates such that each chromosome that you can see on the screen is now double. We're having sister chromatid. Now, both of them come together. Now, take a look at this diagram. There is crossing over such that there is exchange of material between the chromosome. You can see that the chromosome of this have exchanged material with this. So, this is the major difference between the prophase 1 of meiosis and the prophase 1 of the mitotic division. After crossing over, the chromosome actually separates or move apart. As I said earlier, other events that occur in prophase 1 also occur in the mitotic prophase, such as disintegration of the nucleus, disappearance of, some of the nuclear membrane, condensation of the chromosomes, and others. Next is the metaphase 1, in which the chromosomes align at the equator or at the center. And next is actually the anaphase 1, in which the chromosomes move apart. Remember, homologous chromosomes move apart in the anaphase 1, where the diploid chromosome is now reduced to haploid. The chromosomes that are moving towards the opposite pole actually still consist of the sister chromatid. In the telophase 1, the chromosomes arrive at the poles, there is reappearance of the nuclear membrane, uh, the condensation of the chromosomes, appearance of nucleus, and others. 
Cytokinesis occurs after the telophase 1, in which each of the daughter cells contains half of the genetic material of the parent cell. Note that the chromosome in this daughter cell still contains sister chromatids. As you can see from the diagram, each chromosome actually has sister chromatids. A brief period occurs between meiosis 1 and meiosis 2, and this period is called interkinesis. Unlike interface, there is no DNA replication during interkinesis. Meiosis 2, in this case, still consists of the same stages or phases prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2, and telophase 2. Prophase 2 is similar to mitotic prophase 1, and the same event occurs, while in the case of metaphase 2, it's also similar, they align at the equator. In the anaphase 2, the difference is that sister chromatids now separate. Take a look at this diagram. Sister chromatid now separate and each of them now form a separate chromosome. They move towards the opposite end. Now in telophase 2, the chromosome gets to the opposite end. There is now reappearance of nucleus. There is now formation of nuclear membrane. Remember the events that occur in the telophase of prophase. Those events occur. Now after that, cytokinesis 2, which is the division of the daughter cells. Remember, two daughter cells actually went into meiosis 2. So the two daughter cells will now undergo cytokinesis to form four daughter cells. What is the difference between mitotic division and meiotic division? In mitotic division, the parent and the daughter cells are both diploid, while in meiotic division, the parent cell is diploid, while the daughter cells is haploid. In mitotic division, Two daughter cells are formed, while in meiotic division, four daughter cells or four gametes are actually formed. This is the end of this lesson. Detailed video on meiotic division and mitotic division will be produced separately. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to support this channel. Thank you.